And with the consensus of a voice, we cry, Hallelujah. It is done. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, Barak, you may be seated. Again, I want to say greetings to you all. I don't title messages, but this one today, it is straight talk. Nothing that is foolishious, fallacious and falsehood, but straight from the book. We have a generation of men that have been raised by a harlot, a vile, detestable whore. And she has produced weak men. And we all have been subjugated unto her relics, her falsehood and her lies. To de-emphasize the power and the authority of a man, to place women over the man, that they become weak, without any strength at all. And they tend to take this teaching of this vile whore and try to integrate it with the ways of Yah. It's like a woman today, and we see the proliferation of that, trying to raise a man-child. And so we find the young men today very effeminate. They don't know how to defend themselves in a physical confrontation. They don't understand that Israel. Because they have not been taught the elements of manhood. It takes a man. That's why Yisraya, when the Avat would pass, then she would pass down to the next brother of Ken. That, that child, that being, that Isha, she was raised on the authority and the head of a man. That she could understand the power of a man. And the authority. And so what we have today, these weak fledgling boys, they have no understanding of Torah and the wisdom of Yah. They're weak. And they bring the same putrefied, pukish lies from their damnable image of Jesus Christ, Be'el. And they try to incorporate that with the ways of Yah. It is one thing, I want to say this. When you find a man that was nurtured under what we call a woman, quote, pastor, unquote, you will find the elements of weakness in that man. It is almost impossible for that man to be free from that unless he meets a man and a messenger that will attack that effeminate spirit. When a man is effeminate, he has not the strength, uh, not the wisdom of the Torah. He has no revelation of the Torah. And so he does things according to uh, this whore that has taught him and has raised him up to defy you uh, and to have effeminate and effeminate aspirations. It is not you. Yeah. I, I want to talk a little plain today. And this is what Yah is looking for, right? This is straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, straight talk, straight truth. I want your eyes to peer upon uh, Yeshaya as he speaks profoundly by the inspiration of the Ruach as Yah speaks unto him. Because of this defile unbelief, of Yisra'ya when he come to, when he came to being complicit with the Torah. Isaiah chapter 49. Verse 1, expeditiously I want to read. He says, I want you to shemach. I want you to hear to give ear. To give knowledge, to give perception. To give obedience unto what I say. He said all the isles, all of the places of the coast of the far land. He said, I want you to hear what I say. This is your. He says, and I want you to hearken or to hear you people or um, you nations. He did not exclude any nation. Because this raya is scattered throughout every nation. He says, you nations. He says, from afar. He said, Yah has kara. He has called. He has spoken. He has called me uh, from the womb. This is the prophet speaking. 
Even in the first person of Yahshua HaMashiach, he was called from the womb. Yahshua. He said, he has called me from the womb, and the bowels of my ima has made mention. She has zakhah. She has made a memorial. She has made mention of my name. Not the damn name of Jesus. And these damn dogs as gods. He said from the bowels of her womb. She has given honor unto my name. This is a prophecy. This is a first person speech of your sure as he speaking in the presence uh, and everything he says is in the presence i want you to hear the next verse which is vitally important because this whore has painted your sure as this little effeminate thing you hear these effeminate men that will say well uh, if i act like you're sure he was uh, he was decent because they will say that i am not a decent man my vocabulary it is sparrowed with every kind of degenerate type of uh, speech. That's all right. He said, from my womb of my mother, she made known and mentioned to my name. Anytime you find these men today, then I will deal with two precise things of Yah. You will find effeminate men. I don't give a damn how bronze they are. I don't care how they stand, how strong they are. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Well, just be kind and don't say nothing to offend. Oh, I know she's that way. No, you tell a dog, you tell a wolf, you tell a Jezebel that's not proper before Yah. Yeah. He will draw them. No, he will not. He has always sent forth his Torah to heal his nation, his people. He commands all the nations, all the people to hear. He said, I want you to know this. He says this. And he has made my fifth, my mouth. This is your sure now to be like a sharp sword. Any time the herat or the sword doesn't cut, that is not the power of the aids. The testimony of witness, that's what the it is. It is a testimony that witness of the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, Yah has made my mouth like a sharp sword. He said, and in the shadows of his hands has he hid me. And he has made me a polished shaft. In his quiver has he made me implicitly that Yahshua is the word of Yah. And the word of Yah is sharp. It is blunt. It is harsh. And it is tough. You understand? You find these little sermonized, syrupy type messages of weak men because they have no strength of the earth or the testimony of power. You understand? They have not that. You cannot even just consume sugar all day long uh, and expect to get strong physically or, or mentally. It began to destroy the cellular structure because your body cannot uh, take in that uh, and convert that into what is necessary for the body. We need the whole. We need whole, all of the truth. You find these low, weak, effeminate men, and they will pump their damnable eye, Jesus. They hold on to the damnable intricates of Jesus Christ. They're weak, effeminate men. He said, out of my mouth, Yoshua says, the word shall be like a sword. I don't know what you use a sword for, but one thing. That is to destroy, to bring down, to eliminate, to kill to devastate, to demolish, and that is the power of the testament of Yahshua. You don't believe me? Then read Giliana Revelation. Read all of the chapters of Revelation. He said that my mouth, out of my mouth, it is a, it is a sharp sword which go forth. And Yah hides me in his yard in the comfort of his right hand because I am in the direct, the way, the purpose, the constitution, and the counsel of Yah. And what this whore has done, she has prescribed this effeminate. That's why this damn fag hangs on the cross the way he does. I don't give a damn what color his skin is. He looks like an effeminate little twisted thing. There is... Nothing I can do without 
You're sure on my side. There is nothing I can do without. You're sure in my life. Come on, Yisrael. This is straight talk today. You understand? Does that have any relevance to what we call the Brit Hadassah? Or the renewed covenant or the new book? Well, your eyes will be directed to Ibram or Hebrews. Quickly, chapter 4, verse 12. We can see whether this Nobi spoke a shekha, a lie of deception to deceive us. It says here in Ibram, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Huh? This is what Shaul, uh, 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 Barnabas, one of them, the writing of this book, he says, uh, For the Torah, Hebrews 4, 12, uh, for the word of Yah, he said it is quick, it is alive. It is high, it has life. It is a living substance. It is a beast. Do you understand that when Yah uses the word life, L-I-F-E, it is associated as well when he uses the word B-E-A-S-T, beast. It is spelled the same way, K-H-A-N-E-E, -E, hyphen, high, high, life. And so he sends forth the beast of destruction, and the beast is full of life. For the word of Yah, for the word of Yah, it is quick. He tells us it is powerful. It has the kuach. It has the strength and the nurturing. It is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Did not you all show in the first person in your shire? So he has put in my fifth the words like a sword. Did he not say that? Yes. Any time a true messenger speaks, it's going to cut. But a true messenger of Yah, he's going to cut down to the depths of our bosom. For what purpose? You only cut to operate, don't you? A physician will cut into the inner parts of a man to alleviate, to take out, or, or to rid him of diseases. That's what the word of Yah should do, because should cut and rid us of the diseases every time we hear it. The, these are what the word, uh, what the Torah calls keli, keli, keli. Uh, it is what we dress our minds in. And the keli is the dressing of one, clothing physically, naturally, spiritually. We dress our minds in things that cause death upon us. We need strong men today. We need men that are strong and, and vibrant and powerful. That their testimony in the presence of this damn wicked world, that they will know that this is not like any other man. You understand? And that's the truth. I'm going to speak straight talk today. You understand? He says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It is so powerful that it pierces even. Uh, it causes a division uh, or it brings uh, a shonda. Even the nefesh and the ruach. Uh, it is so precise that the spirit that operates in you, it will separate that from the living substance that is in you. It is so powerful that you think you're operating uh, in the Ruach of Yah and you're operating in the Ruach of hell and darkness. Uh, it will even separate that from your, your living being. Uh, the nephesh of the soul as we have learned. Uh, it is more than some invisible thing. It is the fullness of man. Uh, it, is the, it is the substance of a man. It is the life of a man. And that that's how powerful the Torah is. That it separates it brings the divide between the ruach that is convincing or the ruach that is persuasive that it will separate that from the living life that is in you that's how powerful it is and you don't get that by some little sermonette you don't get that by some little syrupy type message that thinks you i will mind i like that but i will come on all right i intend to err in I will bow, I will enter into your bosom, your shot with the sword of your. And cut out every damnable wicked thing there is. Well, you act like you're angry. Well, I will show you why I'm mad. This is a stupid generation. They think they know how to study, but they don't. Can I move a little further? It divides the shanda, the nefesh, and the ruach. It separates the joints from the marrow. <laughs> You have nothing without marrow. It brings about a separation that is so defined. You cannot walk without the marrow of your bone. You have nothing. You are a cripple. 
It brings us, it will bring you to the crippling stage and show you how crippled you are. That's what the power of his word does. And we need that, Yisrael. Y'all need to cripple us from our damnable twisted ways. He need to break our bones and exact his marrow from our vile defiant ways that defy the Torah of Yah. And it is a yada, it is a discerner. It says that the Torah is a discerner. What does a discerner do? When one has the ability to discern, they have the ability to recognize. This is a generation that cannot discern what is tov and evil. Daniel says that the wicked, the Russia will do wickedly, uh, and they shall not understand. But that he that is so deep uh, and walk in the order of Yah, he discerns, he understands uh, both time, uh, what time, uh, and above all the mishpatim, the judgments, the mishpats of Yah. Yahweh makes himself known by his ruach of mishpat. It discerns even the thoughts and the intents of one's own life. It lets us know it's a damnable thing. Not, no, it is not the dam applied. It is a damnable thing that rests in your bosom. And here is the sword of correction to, uh, to rid you of that damnable wicked thing. It is a discerner. It recognizes what's in us. And that's why this is a nation that is squirmish. It doesn't want to hear. Give them some little, uh, little left-leaning, uh, effeminate, uh, wrist-flop man. They like that. Or uh, some Jezonite woman that stands before them uh, and flaunt uh, whatever authority they have granted unto her. And these weak, insecure men, and these women that are insecure, they fall subject unto that. And they bow to a damn Christo, a damn damnable God that is vile and unclean. Well, that doesn't give a witness that that's out of his mouth or there's a sword of death. There's two witnesses there, isn't it? One from the Old Covenant and one from the Brit Hadassah. Yah said, let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Well, I will give you the witness out of Yahshua's mouth in the book of Gilgana, Revelation. Hallelujah. He says here in the book of Revelation, Gilgana chapter 1 verse 16. And he had Yahshua HaMashiach. That's why the enemy is always trying to impart the mark. In our right hand. It says that he has in his. He has in his right hand. Seven stars. All of this is representative. Uh, of, the, of the seven Rachim of Yah. The house of Yisra'ya. All of this Yisra'ya. He said out of his mouth. Out of the mouth of who? Him. Who is him? It is Yoshua HaMashiach. Was he there not for the revelation of Yoshua Yakahanan? He was there for the revelation. And when a man gets the revelation of Yahshua, he has a sword that comes out of his mouth. Hallelujah. Not a popsicle. Hallelujah. He has a sword. Yeah. And it is polished. Hallelujah. It is polished. It is hidden in the sheath of his bosom. In the testimony of the power of God, Yahshua. He said, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shone in his strength. Even Moshe didn't shine like that. He said, but the countenance of Yahshua. You can't look upon the sun shining in his strength. He said that Yahshua, his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. When a man has the visitation from Yah. Men are not going to peer upon him with acceptance and rejoice in any fellowship with him. They will try to find things as they did with Yahshua to try to pick him apart. Let me tell you something, hypocrites. You will not, you will not cause me to alter the course. I don't give a damn if you send ten thousand dollars. Damn your money, because it meant nothing at all. Cursed be every dime you've sent here. It was of no value anyway. The man gives, he gives as a chip forgiver. He never makes mention of it. Hallelujah. This damn wicked spirit of today. It says, did it say a popsicle went out of his mouth or two-edged sword? A two-edged sword. It meant to kill. 
when he cut it meant to make sure that nothing is left undone he said a two-edged sword in his counting was as the sun that shines in his brightness well, well is that any relevance unto us are we not a part of the assembly of Yisra'ya? are we not he spoke to one in the same writings of Gileana, the, the assembly of Pergamos. He said, I, I, I know your works. I even know where the seat of Hashatan is. It's here. It's in the mind of a nation that rejects Torah truth. Where a man cannot identify what is of God. He's a damn sick beast. He's a twisted, effeminate thing. It's like a faggot cannot identify he is a faggot. And these same beasts would tell you, oh, I love. Listen, I want to inject this. Is this love when a boy can bludger in his mother and father to death with a baseball bat? And those that are associated with him say, well, he was a loving boy. He loved his father and he loved his mother. When a mother can take her baby and put it in the microwave and fry it and take her children and slit their throats with a knife and they will say those that associate with her where well, she was a loving mother she loved her children when a daddy can take his wife and his babies and take a pistol to their heads and kill them all and they will say he was a loving man he took care of his children he loved them when a freak that's not even a freak that says that he is drawn to another man and he calls that love something is twisted and this damn thing we call love they have learned the way of a whore and that Jesus Christ is a damn whore she's a slutty slut not your sure when a beast of a woman says she's in love with a woman and she loves her and embraces her like a man and they call that love I don't want that that's why my friend I've told the people all the years don't love me with your love I don't want you to love me. Take it somewhere else. Don't tell me you love me. Don't, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I don't want you to tell me you love me. Let's get real. This is straight talk today, all right? Hallelujah. And they want to paint, paint your sure. They paint their damn Jesus. They want to paint your sure as a passive. That our sins, we can just walk through this life. And every time we sin will, willingly after we have received the Dharma, we trample him under our feet and spit in his face and say, and we shake our hands at Yah and tell Yah, damn you. I'm not afraid to speak like that. Yah knows I love him. My desire is to walk in his commandments, his mitzvah with all that's in me. I stumble, I fall, but I don't fall unto the, the power and the delusion of sin, whereby I will not obey the Torah. When a man falls on the delusion of sin, he cannot walk, his mind is bewitched, he cannot obey the Torah, he does not go back to the Torah, he does not make shuba turn around and make teshuva. Come on, Yisrael. Yeah. You'll yawn the Revelation chapter 2, 12, this straight talk today, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit. Not as much preaching as I am going to talk. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2 verse 12. And the Melach, the messenger of the congregation of Pergamos, Hatab, right. He said, I want you to write this. I want them to know who is saying this. That's all the book of Gileana talks about. The death, the terror, what shall be. Listen now, he said, you say unto Pergamos, these things, Amma, speak, says, demonstrate, these things, says he. There's an identity there, isn't it? There is an identity there. There's someone that is saying that. Well, how do I know who he is? Well, if I search the Torah, I will find out. He which has the sharp sword uh, with two edges who is that Joshua Hamashiach he's the only one that has a sharp sword with two, two edges that's why we need the aid uh, the testimony of Joshua Hamashiach we need the witness of that we need the power of that testimony Yisraya. this is what he says he said I know your damn filthiness I know where the seat of Hoshotan is I know the credence you have given unto him but I'm warning you to get it right get right with Yah and do it now, get right, Yisra'ya. Let the Torah show you how. 
Bow down your wicked knees. Confess all of your damn sins. Get it right with Yah. Get it right with Yah Yisra'ya. I'm not repenting. And I'm not afraid. I'm not fearful. Yah needs a precise and a specific man that he may open his, uh, his vocal cord to. Uh, he's not speaking to these damn liars, these stumpers uh, that say that God spoke to me. Your damn God did speak to you. You're sure didn't I? Your damn Jesus did speak to you. The lies of the mothering whore did speak to you. Not the power of your sure Hamashiach. What kind of men do we need? Quickly in the book of Jeremiah. This is straight talk today. I'm just talking. You sound as though you're mad with your voice. I am mad. I will show you why I'm mad. What the book says. And if you're a wise man. If you're not mad. You are a cheap imitation of a damn prostitute. Well baby don't say nothing to her. Now mama tell her. Don't come here that way. You go see her. These damn weak, cowardly men. I will, man. Appreciate you. Look what he says in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 5. Verse 1, I want to begin reading. He's talking to a people that we are, we are this people. We are so damn hypocritical that we profess your shibu. Our lives are not worth a damn. And that's why he's talking to them. So he tells the Nobi, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 1. He tells him to shub. He tells him to run with, uh, with expectation, to run, to run. He says, run you. I want you to go to and fro uh, to the streets of Yerushalayim. Well, this is specific to Yerushalayim. Are we not in Yerushalayim? It's not our city. That, are we not a city that sit upon a hill? Is not this the city, the man where the shalom of Yah is taught? Do we not follow the shalom of Yah? He said, I want you to run to and from the streets of Yerushalayim. He said, I want you all zen. I want you all zen, your spiritual calculation. I, I will gala, I will open it up. I will take the covering off your eyes. He said, I want you to see now. And I want you to yard that no. He said, I want you to seek. I want you to set your heart with passion. I want you to set your mind with a great passion. Seek in the broad places. Thereof. He said, if you can find a man. How sad. If you can find a man, what is a man? It is a man that has the ruach and the power of Yah, the breath of your shoe, that testimony of great substance. You find those that have the similitude of a man, but they're not men. They may have the physical, physical body and all of that, but they're not men. There are those that have the physical shape that you and I have as men, and they call themselves a woman. Talk to me, Yisra'ya. They're not even beasts. They're not even beasts. That's not even a beast. Not even beasts will do that, Yisra'ya. A woman that has a body of a woman, she calls herself a man. That's not even a beast. You can go across the field with those goats, with the sheep. Uh, the ram knows, and they know who the ram is. And they know who the rams are. You understand? He says, see if you can find me a man. Just one man. A man. He said, if you can find a man. He said, if there be any. Now, this is the strength of a man. Now, he said, if there be one, any that. Uh, he uses the word execute or asa. If there be any that execute. One that asa is one that observe. One that asa is one that celebrates judgment. When a man is in a position to make judgment according to the Torah of Yah, he celebrates it. He says, Yah, you have brought them into my presence, and I will utilize the tools of your Torah. When a man is a cowardly jackass, he's not even a jackass. That's why they're trying to blur the gender today. Men call themselves women, women call themselves men. And they utilize the phrase, you and your Isha walk up and they say, you guys. Don't call me a damn guy. Don't call here and say, you guys. It's one of the most violence of expressions uh, there is. I'm not a vile, filthy thing. That's what a guy is. It is a repugnant damn thing. I will not call you a guy. I will not call my wife a guy. I will not call Yisrael a guy. So don't you call here with that. We're not guys. You guys down there, you guys up there, damn you. For a man, Asa, he celebrates, he rejoices. He's a man that executes mishpat judgment. 
You find a man that celebrates judgment because it is one thing that that man knows that Yah, his great love, is correcting him. He is known unto Yisra'ya by his mishpatim, by his judgment. The same prophet said, Yah, correct me in thy judgment and not in thine Hamas, in your terrifying of your anger, your hostility of your wrath. Correct me, judge me. This is Yah's way and always has been to, to point out that which by the power of his word, to, to discern what is in us and let us know And we're such a damn wicked people, we don't repent because we constantly do it over and over again. And he gives us the parameter of the world and say, look at them. He's dealing with the whole world, Yisra'ya. He's dealing with the whole world. We ought to be a light and a pattern unto the world. We're weakly and beggary. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to act like worldly men. I'm not going to act like them. I'm a warrior. And nobody's going to take that from me. Hallelujah. And then when my flesh begins to deny me Yah's will, then let it be. But as long as I'm virile and strong, I will stand. You understand, Yisra'ya? And yes, I will, my hypocrite, keep myself because the Torah tells us physical exercise profit little, but what is the meot of Yah? But Shabbat guarding or the guarding of Torah is of great gain. And yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep myself in a physical shape. That my mind is not creosote with all kinds of chemicals and death that spew from my mind to doubt and to deny Yah. You can. I will not. Hallelujah. He said, you fought a man that execute judgment. He said, and not only that, uh, a man that is faithful and seeketh, or he bachash. What a man truly seeketh, Yah, he demands of Yah. What a man truly bachash, he seeks Yah, and his desire to know him is greater than anything. In life, death is greater than anything. He said, fight a man that seeks the truth. Find a man that seeks the truth. Uh, he said, if you find a man, I will pardon it. Yeremiah 5, 2. And though they say, and this is our attitude. And though we say. And though you say. And though I say. And though they say, Yah lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Although they say, Yah lives. Surely they swear by Shekha, they're damn liars. They're filthy. They're liars. They're corrupt. They say, surely Yah lives. This is straight talk. S-T-R-A-I-T talk. All right? Because they say, surely Yah lives. He said, they're liars. They're damn liars. They're corrupt. Why? Verse 3, O Yahweh. Are not your eyes upon the truth? It's not the eyes of Yah upon the truth. That's what his eyes upon. Is your sure not the truth? Yeah. He said, not your eyes upon the truth. He said, Yah, you have, you have nacha, you have stricken this, you have stricken this beast, this people. He has stricken this damn wicked nation, America and Britain and France, Africa, all other nations of the earth. He said, you have stricken them. But they are not cool. They don't even fear you. They don't even tremble. They don't even recognize you. They, they don't even cool. They don't even fear you. They, they, there is no anguish. There is no fear in them at all. He said, you're stricken them in all of their pain. He said, you have chala. You have caused your work to be finished. That they may perish. He said, you have consumed them. But they have ma'ain. They have refused. They Take their hands, just like they, they would walk sure on the, on the stake. They say, if you be the son of your, free yourself. If you're so mighty and bad, you be the big, great I am. Uh, then free me. Your sins have caused the travail upon you. It's your damn wickedness of your mind. Whereby you're not free. He said, they refuse. They're stubborn. And they say they know me. They refuse to receive Musa. Isn't this a generation like that? You talk too harsh to the people. You say this and you say that. I remember working at IBM and I watched this man go up and down one of his third line managers. He was a fourth line manager. He went up and down him like you slide up and down him. The third line manager did not respond with any kind of accusation against him. He simply humbled himself and they went from there. He did that right in front of me. And then he looks at me. And I looked at him. 
Of course, I did not want to lose my job either. And he looks at me and he, and I looked at him. You understand? And at that time, I was playing on a volleyball team for him. And he saw the physical proudness of this man. Sure, he did. And I looked at him. And I looked at him with distaste for what you did to him. But he knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. So we are a nation that refused. That man did not refuse instructions or correction. We are a nation of people that refuse Yaz Muzab. Well, I'm a strong man. I'm strong as you. I've always found that when young men come here, they want to challenge me. They want to challenge me in basketball or whatever. They always, they, come, come on, challenge someone that's a baller like Ma'ak Shimri. Challenge him, check him. He's the baller. But they always want to challenge me. Give them some kind of erotic type of uh, expression or sensation that I beat him there, so I got him here. You are a fool, man. You are a fool. And you are silly. Hallelujah. And I've watched that over the many years that they always do that. And that's the truth. They don't challenge the others. They always challenge me. Hallelujah. He says, you have consumed, you have kala, you have caused them to perish, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Is this not your sure? Is, you know the word, I, I will get to that. These are such jackasses of men uh, that they think that Yahshua spoke with a little passiveness. He was the power of this manifestation to show them in all of y'all's love. Uh, you still don't give a damn. So you create your damn Jesus. You create your damn Baal, and you got these little weak, effeminate men that they want to talk about certain things on the bed or court of the temple. They want to talk about the showbread. They want to talk about numerology, but they don't want to talk about the damn thing that separated us from Yah. It is our sin. It is our hatta. It is our sins that have separated us from the love of Yah. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about things that, uh, that's easily digestible. This is hard to digest because our Peshach, our transgressing, defined ways can't stomach this. We gurgitate it, we puke it out. This is straight talk today. Hallelujah. He says their faces are harder than a rock. They refuse to return. They refuse. They refuse to return. Yah says this, therefore, I'm saying this. Yeremia, you make sure that it is inscribed unto my speech. He says, surely these are dal. They are poor. They are poor in the ruach. They are poor in their natural wisdom of things. They are poor physically. They are poor spiritually. They are poor. A poor man, his teeth is not like a man with, with wealth. No, we don't have money. We should have wealth. A poor man's body is not like a man of wealth. A poor woman, her mind doesn't function like a, a, a woman of wealth. Yoshua is our Isha. That is not a damn dollar. He is the strength of what promotes the blessings of the happiness. Hallelujah. The shalom of Yah. Yeah. It is that testimony that we are happy. Hallelujah. I'd rather have be broke without a dime and to have the Isha of Yah than to have a billion dollars and afraid and frightened. Sometimes I say to Yah, it would be, you know, we had a little more finance, but I say, Yah, Barak, you for all things, in all things. Yeah. We were in the garden yesterday, and I said, this is too much. And I said immediately, what a damn wicked thing you are, vile, unclean, unappreciative dog you are. Hallelujah. And Yosef, you know how he is. He looks at me with this animated expression. Ooh, oh, I, 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 I don't want that to be. He knows I'm talking to me because I'm talking like this. I say, you're a damn vile thing, man. You unthankful pig. You're swine. Y'all commands you in all things to give. And I'm talking to me, but I'm talking to me this way. And he's that quiet. He's looking. You know how, yo, he gets a little, uh, you talking to you that way? Oh, I don't want you to be like that. But I said, I am that way. I, sh I should have said, because it adds a little labor to me. I should have said, told you have all of the abundance and the riches. So what a damn swine you are, man. These damn cowards that will say, I think I'm above this truth. They're dogs. They're weak men. They're not even a man. They are nacha. They're boys. I don't take it back. They're boys. Listen to this quickly. 
Surely these are poor, they are availed, they are so stupid and foolish, for they have not yada, they have not experienced the way of Yah, nor the judgment of Yah. See, they don't see when a man doesn't experience the judgment of Yah, you, you got these, they call themselves Hebrews. And I I have I have been getting these letters uh, from this little Caucasian. Everything you know he's writing, uh, it is dictated by writings or readings of some other. It is not his own ability to articulate that. Uh, so he's extolling the virtues of what we call the white race, you understand, uh, and telling me how how corrupt those that are the dark skinned, that uh, how how they are. And it, it is uh, it is the white race, uh, it is the Liban. Uh, the word white is Liban in Hebrew, uh, and it means brilliant uh, and to shine for well hell the white race doesn't shine they shine for sin and wickedness uh, like any other people you understand uh? and then you get it from the other half uh, those that say because their skins are black and they've been here that they are the hebrews uh, and they don't want the judgment of God. they never talk about the judgment Hallelujah. never Hallelujah. they talk in this little passive sweet way they sin wickedly they gather in their damn dungeons of darkness uh, and reproach unto yah is not mentioned they lift up the damn filthy Jesus, this freak, Jesus freak. You remember that? In my days, uh, there was a song, or a group called Jesus Freak. And they lift up this damn freak. I'm not afraid to see that. If you're fearful, get out of here. Turn it off. They've extolled this damn lie. We still buy into it. We have a sensation for this damn lie. All liars. No liar. You that love a lie and make a lie, you have made a lie with your damn Jesus. Your gods and your bell. I don't have sympathy for that. Hallelujah. That's right, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says, they, they, these are men that know not the way. Why? Because they don't understand judgment. When you find a man that doesn't understand judgment, he doesn't fear Yah. When you find a man that would allow sin to permeate in his presence, he, he, he has a delight. He can just incorporate himself in that. He, he doesn't know the way of Yah. He doesn't know the way of the mitzvah. He doesn't. If you love me, tell me the truth. I had a chance to talk to my natural brother. He called me the other day. And when I talked to him... Uh, I began to preach and the man got as quiet as quietness can be. And after I said all that, he retorted that, you know, I, I really want to hear this. Because it's not of his understanding and wisdom what he thinks he is saying. You understand, Yisrael, if we loved anyone, we would warn them. We would constantly warn. I would get to that too. Hallelujah. We are so poor, we don't even know how to pick ourselves up. We are foolish. We don't know the way of Yah, nor the Mishpah of Yah. But this is what Yah says. I like this part. No, I'm not one of those, but I like this, what he says in verse 5. He said, I will your lach. Yah says, I will find. Does he say that in your writing? Yah said, I will find. So that means in order for you to find that, you've got to search for that, don't you? You ever lost anything in the house and try to find it? Huh? Zakane, who I was there with him, he lost his telephone. He has one of those... Not the Android, but one of those Apple, whatever it is. And my Ishaw said, I hear the telephone ringing. When he had laid it on the top of his car, we searched high and low. I said, I'll search. I went in his house. I searched, couldn't find it. He went back, searched, couldn't find it. And when we got to Sam's, uh, my Ishaw had said, I hear the telephone ringing. So I ringed again, couldn't hear it. When I got out of the car, came back. I said, Zakin, here's your telephone right here. At the search. But Yah said, I will, Yalach, I will uh, search, I will find me. Look at what he says. The Gadol. He did not say man. So that doesn't just relegate that to Yahshua, does it? He said, I will find me the great men. Is men plural or singular? Is, men's, uh, is, is man singular? What is men? It is a plural word. That means more than one. He said, I will find to me great men. And this is what Yah says. He said, and I will speak to them, only to the great man. He's not speaking to these shallowly weak things that call themselves messengers of Yah. He said, well, find to me great men. I will speak to them. Uh, why? Before they have Yah that they have experienced, uh, they have known the way of Yah. And not only that they have known the judgment of Yah, but, though, but these have altogether broken the yoke uh, and they have burst the bond. Your shoes said, take upon him. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Uh, when you find a true man of Yah, he would deal in the aspect of his Mishpah Temer because he knows it's a terrible thing to fall in the hands uh, of the living God. He sees one in sin. I don't give a damn who it is. 
He lets them know. Hallelujah. He speak out against the foulness of this earth that pollutes the mind of Yisrael. He speak out against sin. He speak out against corruption that is training and forming the minds of your children. That's the kind of man Yah is looking for. That's the kind of man he is seeking. A man that Yada have experienced the way, the derech, the walk of the Torah, the man that loves the Torah. Yah said, that man I will speak by the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. These men have not the testimony. They're weak men. They're soft men. Will you find a man that doesn't deal with those egregious acts uh, that cause a separation between Yisrael and Yah? Sin willfully. He's a weak cowardly of a beast. He's a damn coward. I don't care if you don't buy it. I don't care if you don't love me. I don't care how you feel about me. You don't get these effeminate letters. You speak harshly. You speak with anger. You use the word dog and you use the words whore. As an old man in Delaware, he doesn't like when I use the word whore. But Yah commands Yisra'ya, don't sell your daughters under prostitution. Chana. Unless, unless the whole land be filled with whoredom. Has not this happened here? This is a land of every kind of wicked whoredom. Uh, the women dress like whores. The men dress effeminate. I don't care if they call in the name of Yah, they dress no different than the world. There should be a difference between the people of Yah and the people of the world. The women should not let dress like the women of the world. They should not be wearing pants and showing their ass and their titties out. It's wrong. They should not dress that way. To wear pants is an abomination unto you. Put your babies on that. Uh, showing their little ass and putting them on mini skirts is wrong. It's wrong. It's not right. The beauty of the Tiferah, the bath of Tizayana, is, is this beautiful aura of the smell of the sweetness of the fragrance. Of the obedience and their submissiveness uh, unto the authority of the, or the order of Almighty Yah. And so because we have sold the daughters unto this Christian whore, unto this faggot Jesus, uh, they have no strength and no beauty of a woman today. So I have been a part of that, so I must redeem that. I must, assault, I must go against that enemy of Yahshua. I must take the sword of Yah. I must allow the power of the living sword to, to flow out of my loins. I must not speak like a weak, feminine man. I'm not trying to appease them. I'm trying to show them it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of Yah. In his hands of his mishmatim, of his judgment, you don't want to fall there. So I get these cowardly little weak men. Uh, you speak harsh. Uh, you sound like, quote, an angry black man, unquote. Uh, I never hear anyone say an angry Mexican uh, or an angry white man. Uh, why in the hell it must always be an angry man uh, of the diaspora? I don't give a damn if you don't like what I say. I did not say dom. The dom is applied, but I don't give a damn. Why I have to be angry? I'm simply mad as hell. Be ye angry, we say not. Even the Torah gives me the right to be angry. I want you to turn here to the book of the preacher man, Ecclesiastes, Koheti. I don't care if you don't like what I'm saying. This is straight talk today. Straight talk out of the kingdom. This is Yorkshire talking today. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. I want to read one verse here. And verse 7. And I want to define the Hebraic words to let you know that I'm not trying to construe the word. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Isn't that amazing because it's in a perfect, 7 is the perfect, the complete number of Yah, isn't it? Huh? It's what the wicked whore, the Catholic dog called the current number. It is the number of supremacy, completion, perfection. But yet this is in the seventh chapter and the seventh verse. When you find a man, the Torah that we said, mark a perfect man. For the end of that man of Tormin, of perfection, it is Shalom. You will find comfort in the words that he speaks. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 7 verse 7. He uses the word he or surely. He Simply, it is certain, indeed, it is absolutely. So when you see the word he, just like a key, you open the door. He, it is certain. It is an absolute truth. It is uh, absolute. You understand? 
He says, certainly, he uses this expression. I've taught on this, uh, O Shekh. He says, surely oppression. And O Shekh is, this is oppression now. I will read it, define it uh, from its Aramaic or its Hebraic origin. It is extortion. It is to be deceitfully gotten. It is extortioners. It is unjust gain. When we think we're going to gain an entrance into the kingdom by an unjust way, unjust mean, it is oppression, Yisrael. We get things gained unto us by lies and deceit. Just like yesterday, all this hoopla about Facebook. What in the hell does Facebook produce but ignorant people that put themselves up there like jackasses. They sell their rights in their life. They don't, and yet they're worth the IPO yesterday fell short under $104 billion. It's insane, Yisrael. Yet they are the prop of that damn derivative, that market, because there is nothing there but 900 million users. And we're so damn stupid. We are such ignorant people. Don't see that. What are you then? You think you're wise? And your own damn conceit, you're wise. You're wise to do evil. But to do time, you know not how to do it. Straight talk. Straight talk. Surely oppression, the next word says, makes a wise man mad. Does it say that? You see the oppression, you're not mad. And the word mad is hala, hala. It makes a madman to be, to sing of the worthy of the praises of Yah. It is to be praised, just like you say hala, hallelujah, hala. It is hala to be praised, be made praiseworthy, sing, be worthy of praises. And also it has a component That there's a rage there. R-A-G-E. Rage. To act madly. I want to act like a madman. To act madly. And it also says to act like a madman. The oppression of Yisra'ya, the nation. It makes a wise man, a man that is hukham. It makes him mad. Well, you find a man that he has no, he has no egregiousness against sin and the nakedness of this damn world. He's an effeminate man. He's a weak man. I don't give a damn who it is. I'm speaking straight talk. Oppression makes a wise man, not an unwise. He doesn't get mad at it. An unwise man, it will not upset him. But a wise man, but a wise man, he gets angry at it. An unwise man, he doesn't get, oh, it's all right to do that. Well, don't judge them. Well, I will show you on that judge thing, all right? Surely oppression makes the madman. It makes him halal to act like a wild man, to look like a wild man, to act like he's angry at the wickedness, the opposition against his Sabah. And I am. I'm here to fight. And I'm going to fight in his name. Damn your Lord and your God, your Jesus. I'm going to fight in his name. You understand? It makes a wild man mad. He says, and a gift. And so they want to give, give, well, I'll see my offerings there so I can tell you what to do. Damn your offerings. I send gifts so I don't want you to use the word damn. Damn your offerings. You have not impeded this place 18 years. It was here before you said a damn nickel. It will be here until Yah destroys it. So your damn $20.15, and I say that to these cowardly, weak, insecure boys, it doesn't mean a damn thing. We were here before you knew of us, and we will be here when I'm gone, and when you're gone, we will still be until your sure come. And so I speak to raise up strength in my, in my ark. We're going to be strong men. I'm not going to make you feminine men, insecure and weak. I want you to be bold and brazen when it comes to defending the, the throne of Yahshua. We're set to defend the, uh, the cassette of Yahshua. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, but they pull their little gifts out and they destroy the lamb. See, they tell you, well, I gave you that. I sent $20 and you didn't even respond. 
I send a gift and you, and you expect me to write you a 10 page letter. That's how stupid people are. That's how stupid they are. It's insecurity. So I'm mad. How about that? I'm mad. Because of the oppression in this nation. That oppresses people according to how they have classed them and classified them. I'm not going to back down on this damn thing I call the white's mind. I've said it transcends every nationality and every people. I will not back down on it. I don't give a damn what your skin complexion is. And no, I don't have no damn white friends or no black friends. I'm a friend unto Yisraya and the gay of the strangers uh, that have no birthright. Uh, damn these liars. They will say, oh, I've got, I got a black friend. You don't have a damn black friend. Uh, oh, I've got white friends. You don't have a damn white friend. Uh, the liars, they, they do that to promote them. Uh, to make it so that they, they, are not, they don't have no racism and no prejudice ways. You coward ass. I'm not backing down. I'm glad that Yah brought me up through all of the despair, which wasn't great. My Zachain said to me, you haven't gone through a damn thing. This little fire. So don't come to me complaining. That's what he told me. He let me know that... Uh, Hell, he, instead of him saying murderer, he said, don't suffer as a murmurer because he brought a greater, he, he could come out because when a man is a murderer, a murmurer, they will murder, they will kill, they call upon the demons, that's what a murderer does. That's when they begin to murmur. Come on, Yisraya. Oh, well, he missed the word, now you miss what he was saying. It's amazing that uh, people will retain just one aspect uh, and they don't retain the overall the truth. Uh, come on, I haven't suffered through no fire. These are small things compared to the great honor and the splendor that shall be revealed. Straight talk today, all right? So yes, I am halal. I'm enraged. I'm enraged against what Britain does to nations and, and destroy them. I'm enraged with this punk nation like France and Britain and America, how they rob the poor and destroy them. Yeah, I'm preaching of a social type of approach to thing. Because Yah, this bastard that wrote me the other day, Yah even says to Yisrael Yah, he said, if a stranger sojourn with you, you love him. You treat the stranger just like you would a Yisrael Yah light. So if the people live in my neighborhood, I would do right by them. Yesterday, Aksimion, he, he wanted me to pick for this. I said, Simeon, I, man, that's too much, man. Can I do this next week? I want to take this one somewhere. I want to take that one somewhere. I want to take that one somewhere. I want to take that one there. And they have been kind to us. They have done favor to us. I said, Simeon, please, man. I got so much to do. Let me get this ready and that ready and this ready. And I promise you, and I will. I will prepare the baskets what he wants to take to others. You understand? So even a stranger, and the word stranger is gay, one that is born, has no birthright among Yisraeli. But Yah say you love him like you do a Yisraeli life. What is love? You teach them the truth of their sins and their wickedness. If they run from you, let it be. Hallelujah. And these weak cowards that have come under the auspices of this dirty whore, that's why those that call themselves white Hebrews and black Hebrews, they're damned, they're the falsehood of hell. And they don't even walk in the Torah of Yah. They don't even delight in Yah's truth. How about that? Bold statement there, isn't it? Because I'm a bold man. I'm a bold man. You can't whip nobody. I know what I can whip you. That's all that matters. Because if I could not, you would have not made the challenge. Hallelujah. You got some doubt. So that's why I'm angry as hell now. And that's why I'm angry. And the reason what I say is so harsh to others, Shalomo tells us it quickly, Mishli, Proverbs 15.10. Proverbs 15.10, write it down. He says, Muza, a correction, is ra. It is harsh. It is grievous. And that's what the word ra means. It is grievous, harsh. One writes me and say, you are harsh. Your words are harsh. They should be more tough words or more, quote, good words, unquote. That's what this beast of hell said. 
There's nowhere in the Torah where Yah teaches us how to sing. He said make a joyful noise. He just said make a noise. He did not say how to sound. See, this whole has taught us, all right, all, let's sing a cappella. That's not what Yah taught us. Sing to Yah Israel, sing to Yah, sing to Yah all the people of the land. Sing to Yah Israel, sing to Yah Israel. You yeah, know what he told you? Know what he commanded you that there should be a, a coordinate, a coordination of voices. He said, sing, sing. He said, I know to you, uh, you may think you sound well. It's a joyful noise to me, though. He said, make a joyful noise. I don't give a damn how it sing. It's one thing I used to say to the person that was before my Achia. I would say, just let the people sing. Quit worrying about sopranos and altos and bass. Let them sing. Just let the people sing. The world, this whore, has done us that way. That we can't appreciate the simplicity of Yah. It's just simple. Praise the praise the praise the. If one sounds like that's all right, sing it, man. That's all right. You listen to it long enough, you begin to hear. You begin to hear the lyrics. We are people that love the sound bites. Let me move. He says, "Correction is grievous to him that forsakes the way." When a man forsakes the Torah, when he forsakes the way, correction, any kind of correction, is grievous to him. And he that hates reproof shall die. They die spiritually. They don't even know the power of God. They don't even know the witness of God. Well, Reach died when he did that. He said that. Uh, I say to all men, once they try to find something, I never look to find anything on an ark. I don't want to know anything about him. I don't care what he has done in life. I don't care what his situation. I don't give a damn if he's laid with a thousand women mad 50 times. I don't give a damn about that. I don't want to know nothing. Don't even try to tell me that. I don't even allow me to tell me. I don't want to hear that man. I don't give a damn what you're like. I don't care what this woman has gone through. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. And so these effeminate men like to hear that, so they take advantage of the women today. Tell me, well, I did this, and I, and I slept with this man, I did that, and they began to rouse themselves on that. It is the truth. I don't care if you don't like me. You don't even like you. Because if you loved you, you will love truth. And so correction, well, anytime we go out of the way, it's, it's hard. When a man walks out of the way, they think I'm harsh. They think I'm hard. But I tell you, there's one that is harsher than me. I will let, let you see who he is, all right? So it is, it is, uh, 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 it is, uh, it is harsher them. Uh, and, and what are the utterance of Shirach? I want you all to write this verse down. And uh, you got the book of Shirach, I want you to find this. It says in Shirach, chapter 6 and verse 20. He's talking about the wisdom of Yah here. Isn't that the correction of Yah? Isn't that what Mishri talks about, correction unto a young man? The first six chapters there, that's all it talks about. But this is what Shirak utters by his wisdom of the Torah, his, his expertise of the Torah. He says in Shirak 6.20, he's talking about wisdom. He calls her she. She is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned. So when a man is unlearned, they're stupid men. I sound harsh. Wisdom, the wisdom of a wise man, it is very harsh and unpleasant to a man that has unlearned it. When you find a man that is stupid, oh, Reach, that man down there in Jefferson, South Carolina, he's a stupid man. Because you are an unwise man, you understand? That's what Shirak says. She is, wisdom is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. A man without understanding to be known, the wisdom to discern, there is always going to find something against me or you or Yisraya. He said that. So they want to try to pick out a word to, that, uh, or pick out a phrase, uh, what one has said. I was talking to my Zakane, we were walking yesterday, and I said, you know Zakane, I said, in essence, what I was saying to him, don't be, don't even let that trouble you if you can't even enunciate a word or you just mispronounce it. I remember this educated preacher. He was an educator. He went to ORU. I was listening. As a matter of fact, and that day I watched him. He came to a word that he could not pronounce and everybody got quiet and, uh, you know, like, uh-oh, he doesn't even know how to enunciate it. And so he said, okay, then I, I, I got that one. Okay. Uh, I. And so he came to another one. He, could, he said, help me, y'all. And nobody could help him. He said, see there? 
He knew, see how you judge me? See how you looked at me? Tell me, enunciate that one for me. Well, nobody could do it. I said to my Akka, I said, in that assembly, that whole house, there were lawyers, there were doctors, there were educated PhDs and masters, and, and, but yet they couldn't enunciate it. Well, I know how to say it and you don't. I was there in Memphis, a man says to me, uh, I need two hours of your time if you don't mind. Man, I don't have no two hours to talk to you. I said, okay, uh, what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about cam trails. I said, I'm sorry, cam, cam trails. I said, what are you saying, sir? I want to talk to you about cam trails. I said, you want to talk to me about the chemical trails or the chem trails? People think they get a little something, they think they have something, they're stupid. I said, you want to talk to me about the chem, chem trails or the chemical trails? I said, sir, I, I don't need that. I said, I, I've known about that 20, 30 years ago. I said, so that's not, that's, you, you don't have to waste two hours on that. And when the man got quiet and sat down and listened to me as I extolled Yoshua among the Ach, then he learned a little something. He thought he had something that. That's the way we are. We think we got something. That's why there are those uh, that say, well, I went to this church and that one and they did not know the true way. Well, you are jackass uh, if you didn't have the power in your life uh, to, to stand for truth. Uh, and then you could, uh, could extol the power of that truth. Uh, and someone would recognize that if you had truth in you, uh, you tell me that you were the only one. I would be a damn fool to think that. That's this stupid generation that's been trained by a whore. She's been trained by the whore. The woman slut that produced daughters that are slutty Protestant prostitutes. Hallelujah. And they don't even give a damn about each other. No Protestant love the church of God in Christ. No church of God in Christ love the church of God. No church of God love the house of Jesus Christ. No, no Hebrew assembly calling themselves. The Hebrew Israelites of Jesus Christ gives a damn about the Hebrew Jesus Christ across the block. All right. Damn your Jesus. I ain't backing down if y'all take me. I mean, I ain't backing down on that one. Hallelujah. So when a man hears wisdom, he's an unlearned, stupid man. It sounds harsh. Well, he's harsh. Straight talk today, all right? He doesn't talk with pleasantry. Yeah? So you find these effeminate men that love to talk with what we call pleasantry. That doesn't mean a man is feminine because his voice is quiet. He does not, uh, his oratorial ability is not like one who, who can raise their voices to a cassandra. But when he speaks even in his quiet voice, uh, even when you're in the, in the quietness, in the still in the quiet voice, when he speaks, it's, it's a sharp sword. My mother could say things to me that were cut down to the inward parts. She didn't have to fuss at me. She, could, she, would, say, she would say things like, son, I love you. You tell me that doesn't cut. I don't want to see you doing what you're doing. That cuts. She didn't have to rage at me like I'm raging now. But when she would say it like that, it would cut. Come on, you tell me a wife that her husband has done wrong. She says, I still love you. Come on, you tell me that doesn't cut. She goes, I love you. No, she says, I love you. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> That's all right. Man, you, come on. Don't do me that way. I'd rather you, I'd rather you rage at me. Don't, don't do me that way. <laughs> come on. Talk to me, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he that is unlearned, she is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned, but he that is without understanding will not remain with her. So when people hear a man or a simple messenger, the words seem harsh because wisdom is unpleasant to them. They don't want to hear the wise sayings of Yah. And they may hear they're not going to walk with it. They're going to find an outlet or way to escape Yisraeliyah, hallelujah. It's one thing because we as a nation, we don't see the way. We don't see the way of Yah, hallelujah. We don't see, we think uh, that they will say, you're rough. You use the word dog and all that. But Yah is rough. Can I show you how rough he is? Quickly here in the book of Lucas, 1921. 1921, Lucas, 1921, Marcus Lucas. See, people don't see this way. They don't see this side. They don't see this about Yah because they've been cream puffed and sugar daddy. It says, and we know this parable, I just want to read two verses of this. Concerning the ones that were giving uh, five, three, and one gift. And Yah says, he gave, Yahshua spoke a parable of this king. Yah is the great Melech. Yahshua is the Zah of the prince of his kingdom. He is the king. And he tells us the conclusion of this when there was no reward, or there was no return on the usury. He says in Lucas 19.21, 
The man says, for I feared you. For I, yira, I feared you greatly. Why you fear me? He said, because you are an austere. You are harsh. You're rough. You're rigid. He said, you're an austere man. Who can only do this? You take up that which you have laid not down. Yah said, I didn't sow, but it's still mine. He's talking about Yah here. But he called him austere. You call, he called him rash and harsh and, and hard. He said, uh, and reap that which you did not sow. Yah has not sown one seed out there in the field, but it's his seed. Yeah. It's his. All belongs to Yah. And this is what Yah says to us. And he says to him, he says, out of your mouth will I judge you. You wicked, he called him a rasha, a wicked abbot, a wicked servant. You're damned to hell. When Yah used the word the rasha, you're already condemned. You've already been judged by the Torah of Yah. You already condemn. He said, you wicked servant. He said, you yada. You knew that I was austere. You knew I was hard. You knew I, you knew I was tough. They think Yahshua is this little passive punk. Effeminate freak Jesus. Don't come to me talking that damn Jesus talk. I don't like it. Get out of my face. And of course I will. When they open that door to me, they're in trouble. I don't care who it is. Hallelujah. And he said to him, out of your mouth shall I judge you. You wicked servant. You knew that I was austere. He said, you know I was a hard man. He said, take up that I laid not down. And I reap that I did not sow at all. You know it's, that's my nature. I don't have to sow a damn thing. It's mine. The heavens above are the foot, uh, are the foot throne of Omar Yah. The heavens belongs to him. If he was hungry, what would you feed him? Because the earth is his. And the fullness, the male, the male, the whole everything, it all belongs to him. Even the wicked belongs to Yah. Even the wicked belongs to Yah. The wicked man belongs to Yah. The wicked belongs to him. What would you feed him? He is austere, Yisraya. He is not this little passive effeminate thing uh, that these men that have been raised uh, and they're still on the titty breast of a woman. Uh, they're still on the Jesus and the Catholic whore and the lying doctrines of hell. Uh. So when a man speaks with wisdom, they do not receive him. They think he's harsh and rude and crude. It's amazing that people will let you know that you're sure. What word was he made? Was he made the Torah? Sure he was. There was no word but Torah, and there still is no word but Torah. Yeah. And they think that he negated all that he said in this book. You think it can be written? All the books of the earth can contain what he said. Because the revelation of three words that he says, if he says, get thee behind, what does that imply? I can preach on that message a hundred messages. That's a fact. I want to show you what he was made here in the book of Lucas quickly. In the book of Yokohanan. One of the most intimate writings I say. Yokohanan and Daiwi Tehillim. They're the most intimate books there. John chapter 1 verse 1. It says in the beginning of Bereshit was Daba was the word. In the beginning was the word. And it tells us that the Daba was with him. Where was the Daba? Where was the word? It was in the bosom of Yah. It's his shot. It's his breast. It was with him. It was with him. Just like a woman having the seed of life in her. It does not come to fruition until the seed of the man. You understand? And the beginning was the word and the Dabar was Yah. And the Dabar was, was Yah. It was Yah. That's why you have this Trinitarian lie and the doctrines of darkness. Uh, it is just simply saying that everything that Yah spoke, it was his bosom. It was his, it, the power of your sure. The word was Yah, and the word was with Yah. It was in him. There was no person there by the name of Yahshua. There was no Melach. It was in him. They are a God. The word was in his bosom. It was in his mouth. His tongue, when he spoke, he spoke Yahshua. He spoke the revelation of Yahshua. When he said, let there be light, he spoke Yahshua. You understand when he said, let there be Hoshek. When he separated the light from the darkness, he spoke Yahshua. He came into the world, didn't it? He was the light of the world. He came into the world. And because men love darkness more than they love light. Why? Because the deeds were wicked. The deeds are foul and unclean, Israel. Hallelujah. 
is the power of this Torah becoming flesh. Yoshua, he is the power of the eternal, of the Olam Fiat truth of Yah. That's what he is. He shall never cease. Hallelujah. And in, in, in verse 2, quickly. It says the same was the beginning with Yah. Because Yah is, he was, he is, he is now, he was. He was what word? He is what he was. In what began it? Bereshit, he was. He is still word. You can't trace back the lineage of Yah. He gave us a lineage of his Torah in flesh, in Yeshua. He said, all things were made by him. And without him, without Yah, Yeshua was not anything made. In him was life. In him was the high, the strength, the, the visibility of Yah. And the light was the light of men. It is the awe. It is the life of Yahshua that give us light, wisdom, and understanding of the Torah. It is the life of Yahshua. He lived exemplatory according to the Torah. It is the life of Yahshua that gives us knowledge of Torah. If any man speaks not according to the testimony and the nobi, it's because they have no light in them. There is no light. There is no awe. There's no revelation of Torah in those men at all. He said, and the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not, or the darkness uh, overcame it. Hallelujah. Verse 6, he said, there was a man sent from Yah whose name was Yachahanan. The same came to be an aid or witness. He came to bear witness or the testimony. And an aid or witness is evidence of. We must have the evidence of the testimony of Yah in us in Yahshua. He came to bear witness of the thing, uh, of the light. And we are the aid or the testimony of the witness of the light of Yah. You know, light and darkness cannot dwell in the same bay at Yisrael. You can't be up the day and down tomorrow. You can't be moody now and, and kind tomorrow. You're wicked. You are a duplicit, wicked, twisted Jezebel and a damn fool of a man. You can't do that. You can't be kind and mean as a damn hell dog tomorrow. Something is wrong in your damn mind. You can't say you love her and don't even uh, appreciate her and speak to her. You can't say you love that one uh, and don't even interact. You're a damn liar. I don't care who you're, man or female. He gave us to live among each other so that we can perfect love. Much as we have opportunity, we must do tough unto all men. Especially Yisrael. You don't mistreat a man. Man say he charged you $50 to do a job. You say I give you $30. No, you give him $55. Show him how much you appreciate it. I've always done that with these men around here. The fellows around here. They do a job for us. No, I only charge it. No, I want you to take that. I want you to have that. But that, no, that's all right. Because that, I know what that does. When I need you, you'll come. When I need you, you'll come. Even for a little small job, you'll do it for me. I was saying to Ox Simeon, I say, Simeon... Your time is more valuable than uh, $50 an hour on a, on, a, uh, on, on a crawler. I said, we get Tommy. They'll make the funds for us to do that, to do this work of us. I need you doing other things. Hallelujah. When he comes, he's going to do me right. I said, look, we don't have money. You know that. I want you to do this. Tell, tell me the bottom line dollar. Do it for that. He will do it. Yah gives us favor with men. I was in a store in Atlanta. I said, look, man. I said, I'm a veteran. You've got to give me a discount. I'm thinking about my boys back home. So you got, you, you, come on, man. I said, I'm a veteran, man. What, what kind of discount are you going to give me? He says, Simi, man, I do better than 10%. I said, talk to me. He said, for you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to drop the prices. You are? I'm not going to charge you that. I'm going to give you 10% off of that, okay? And then when we finish the deal, I will give you 10% more. <laughs> I'm looking to buy more. <laughs> Put it up there. Yeah. Sure he did. And then I left, he gave me his card. Say, so you call me. Here, here my card, here. He calls us have favor with men. They will give unto our bosom. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, the same came to be a witness in verse 7, the witness to bear witness, uh, evidence of the light, that all men, not just some, he was talking to all nations, uh, all men were Yisrael scattered, all men through him might believe, they may have confidence. He said, Yachaham was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. 
that light that was the true light, Yeshua, which lights every, he did not say Yisrael, lights heart. He said every man's heart that comes into the world. Every man that comes into the world, uh, there's a light. It is the breath, it is the word of Yah, and let there be life. And Yah made man, everyone that comes into the world, it is the light of your sure that calls breath, because it is by the command of Yah that breath or life comes out of the womb of a woman. He created that. So every man, every man into the world, it said he was in the world and the world was made by him. What does that imply? He was in the word, the world, the word was in the word, the living Torah. And it was by the power of speech of that Torah, the world was made. He says, and the world did not yada, it knew him not. He came to Yisra'ya, his own, and his own received him, not even Yisra'ya. See, a man like me speak, they don't receive me. They don't receive me. And yet their lives are full of fallacy and wickedness and falsehood. They don't even see their ways, Yisra'ya. But as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name, not the damn name of Jesus. He says, out of the womb, uh, Yeshua spoke out of his womb, uh, that his mother made mention, uh, Zohar, a memorial unto his name. Not some damn pagan Latin Jesus, not some Zeus uh, or Jesus. I know you're not going to buy that, but that's all right. I'm not looking to get paid here. I'm, I'm going to get paid. And it's going to be well worth it all. Hallelujah. He was born not of blood, dumb, dumb, not damn now, dumb. He was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh. See, there was no carnality in that of flesh. Nor of the will of man, but of Yah. He came forth by the power of Yah, not by the will of man. Not because man said, I can produce. Man can't produce nothing. They are trying, but they cannot produce any righteousness at all. It didn't, he did not come by their will. He says, and this is the catalyst, and the word, not Yah, he is the word. The whole of him was in that body. The whole of the word which was written by Moshe was in that body. And for you to negate that and say, oh, Yahshua was a passive, and he was so genteel. He has a mouth that has a sword. And when Yachahan, he said, it's all done. I'm finished with this damn generation. He said, go there on Patmos. I will reveal who I am. And he saw who he is, the terror of Yah that's going to come for. These people don't know Yah. And the word was made flesh and dwell among us. And we beheld the splendor, the splendor of the only begotten of the, of the Abba. Full of the free unmerited love of Yah and truth. He was full of truth. If he was full of truth, he was Torah. He was the expression of Torah. So everything I've read up until uh, 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 the Brit Hadassah, it has been Torah, Yisraya. And that's what Yoshua is full of. He is male. He is male without any room for anything else. He is full of the truth. What a man has the witness of Yoshua, the true witness, uh, he is full of truth. When he has the aid of Yoshua, is full of truth. He doesn't compromise. He doesn't sell you out because of association. He doesn't do that. If he has no friends, he stands strong. Man's foe should be of his own house, of his mom and daddy all turn against him. He still stands strong. He still stands strong. Hallelujah. We the people of Yah, we're not. And we all think we're wise, don't we? Yes, we do. We all are smart. Even the babies think they're smart. They think they're smarter than parents. They think they know things the parents don't know. And we think we know things that Yah don't know. But Yah gives a descriptive description of us here in the mouth of Yeremiah, Jeremiah. This is just straight talk today. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. As the approaching ruins of Yah, as he said, I'm going to bring devastation upon. Are we not in that time of the approaching ruins of Yah? Did not our Zachin, Yah Rabbi Yah, bring that out? That even there's a great fire, great trial that we all should be afflicted by. And these are the small things. And he speaks of the great cataclysmic mayhem that shall be, that's coming because of our hypocrisy and our sins. Yah says to us, we think we're smart in Yah Yah, chapter 4, verse 2. I, I simply ask this question for my people. Are we a part of that? For we the people of Yah. He said, for my people, they are availed, they are foolish. A foolish man is one that despises the wisdom, the chukmah of Yah. 
He despised understanding and the, uh, the knowledge. He said, for my people are evil, they're foolish. And not only above that, but they are perverse. And then uh, this is how they respond. This is a foolish man. When he is corrected, he mocks it. He mocks it. That's a stupid beast. You correct a faggot today and see what he says. This man that wrote me a letter said that I talk about Britney Spear and she could be my damn Britney Spear. Just like Elton John and all these faggots and freaks, they're not going to get right. Yah has sent them strong delusions. And they all believe a lot that they are gods and they are stars. And this damn jackass, the Benny Hinn teaching that he has learned, makes him believe that they're going to get right. She could be your sister one day. No way in hell. They're those that are the children of darkness and the children of light. The Torah and your sure said that. Differentiate. They're goats and they're, they're sheep. And they're not going to get it right. Esau could not get it right. The Huru Iskara could not get it right. The sons of perdition. They've been raised up by hell. They bowed down before hell. Oh, we believe this LaFerry tale uh, testimonies. I was a devil worshiper and then I came to the loud Jesus Christ. You're still a damn devil worshiper. You're still a damn devil worshiper. The name Jesus came out of a damn but twisted wicked mind uh, to oppose Yah. You still a damn devil worship. And folks say, oh, he was a devil worshiper. He was a sadomasochist. And now he worships the Lord God. Oh, oh, oh. He's still worshiping the damn Lord God, the Baal, the devil. Straight talk. Still is. And so man, give it over to that nature of hell. No getting up. There's a delusion in him. And y'all sense a strong delusion. Why? Because they hate truth. Britney Spears will spit on you if you tell the truth. And this coward jackass will do the same. Isn't it amazing that all this he called himself reproving me. Yeah? He tells me that you are preaching the truth. You are, if you're not a duplicit fool, what are you? He's a stupid man. I don't want to go that direction. But I do want to bring it up. How about that? He'll assault my ark and my, our singing here. And he can't even sing. This damn beast can't even sing. His daughters, his wife, can't any of them sing. And he's going to assault and try to insult or assault our singing? Go to hell, man. I hope just by chance he's listening today. He may sneak on just to see. Forget him. He's not even worth it. Listen. My people are foolish. We despise evil. We mock you out when he say you're guilty. Isn't that what we do when somebody say you're wrong? Well, what? I ain't wrong. You've never done that, have you? You mock it when you're guilty. He said, my people are, they are foolish. He said, they have not, they have no yada, they have no understanding. They can't even recognize or, or admit. When he used the word yada, he said, and they have not, they can't even confess. You know you're sick when you can't confess your wrong, your ills and your vile nature. And then he, this is it here, he said, he said, they don't even know me. Why? Because they are so high. They are Sottish. Sottish is simply we are silly and we are damn stupid people. Are we the people of Yah? We're stupid and we're silly. I'm not taking that back. No, I'm not the only man that knows truth, but I know that man doesn't know truth. I know that one that writes me this juvenile letter. Oh, you used to go to the gym and stay four or five hours, then you were a real weakling. You spend four or five hours in the gym. You understand. And I was strong. No, he's a little weak thing. That's what he is. He doesn't like the fact that he sees a man that is masculine and strong in a masculine sense. That's all it is. When people talk like that, that's Oh, I used to be shaped like that. No, you weren't shaped like that. You were never shaped like that. You never looked like that. Just say, you look so pretty, you look so nice, you don't know how to say that. So he's never had any masculinity of strength. Never. I don't take it back. You all can cringe and get scared, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you should be able to do that. You weren't able to do nothing. Shut up. Yeah. What I was able to do 25 years, I'm still able to do it today. What I did when I was 17, I'm still able to do it today. What I did when I was 18, I can do it today. 
Whether they want a 25 and do it today. Whether they want a 35 and still do it. You understand? Box said to me, I said, man, my, I, I got to give up on the ball. He said, Rayak, you still, you bought well enough to play with us. Come on now. What I did when I was 70, I still do it today. What I did at 30, I still do it today. I was a worker all the time. I didn't mind working. I hated that among my brothers because they didn't like working. I like working because I didn't like being broke. Can I move quickly here? My people, we are sottish, we are sahala, we are stupid people, stupid children. They have no, the word low, low. When you say, you say in, in, in the Hebrew, when you say yes, you said, you know, you can enunciate it either way. You say chen, 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 or chen. Chen, like K-E-N. K-A-Y-N or K-E-N. When the word low, it is no, nothing, nothing that it is zilch. When Yah says there is no, when he uses the word no, low, he says, it is, a, it is emphatically, absolutely, there is nothing there without. He said, there is no understanding. Absolutely, there is no understanding in them. He said, there is no understanding, no, no discernment, no insight of wisdom and revelation. He said, they are, all, they are wise to do evil, but to do yasha, to do right, they have no yada. They can't even perceive. They don't even know how to discern how to do right. To do evil, they, we are experts at that. We can do Yisra'ya wrong and then intrigue the world. Hallelujah. The man says to me, if you salute only, as Joshua said, if you salute only your brother, the world salute, they're kind of, you do only that, and then what different, I salute every man. I so, you know what we think salute is, you understand? We think that because if a man salutes a man, if a man is wrong, when, when a police officer, if he does his job right, a traffic patrolman, he doesn't make any difference who's speeding, he stops them, right? And he tells them. He found out how many tickets they've had. Okay, you've gotten too many tickets, we're going to give you another one. You haven't, we'll let you go this time, you understand? So when a man salutes a man, it's only a salutation to say, how are you doing? I don't care if a man is what we call a bomb on the street, I salute him. I don't care who he is. I make a person like that feel more at ease with me uh, than anyone. You understand? I want them to make sure you are of more value, value than what this wicked world purports you to be. We have opportunity to do right by all men. Do right. Don't try to cheat. Don't try to steal. Don't lie. Don't try to get over. Well, you, yeah, I am always looking for a deal. I don't care where I go. I'm a vet. Come on, you all have any coupons? You have anything in the store? Well, we, let me look over here. Oh, we got this one right here for $15 off you. Give it to him. I've had, that happens to me all the time. Because I want to be a steward of y'all's finances and use them properly. It happens all the time to me. To me. What can they say but no? I'm not offended. Where's the manager? Well, I'm the manager. It's okay. That's the best you can do me. Well... I remember that year we were coming back from somewhere, we were flying, and the, 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 they, they made an announcement, if you're willing to give up your seat, we will give you two air tickets, or you will give your air ticket to anywhere in the continental United States. I could have flown, we could have flown in, from California, anywhere in the continental United States. And so I jump, and I'm in line, because I, I'm a mad free ticket. I don't mind waiting five, six hours to get a free ticket, because I knew I was going, we won't take another trip to preach. And so that would be, I wouldn't have to pay for anything. We did not. And so the lady said, well, that doesn't mean you're going to get the ticket because you're here. I said, yes, I understand, ma'am. So I began to just chat with her. I said, to, I said my issue and I, my wife and I, you know, that, that would be a nice to get something like that. We don't mind waiting. And so because I did that, it, I could have said, well, so what? I don't need no, free. no. Lady, I want this free ticket because we don't have money. And so I just began to chat with how are you doing? Everything's all right? And she got so charming. And before she even knew, she was, she was texting me, okay, we, we use your seat. Come on, it was a line full of folks wanting them free tickets. We got them. You had one year to use it. Hallelujah. I could have flew to California on that, but I did not. Because it's not about a pleasure thing, Israel. Moving quickly. Hallelujah. My people, they have no knowledge at all. They have no discernment of me. I want to touch on this quickly here. 
the street talk today. Because there are those that will hear me use words like dog and beast and bastard. Now, anything that, yeah, anyone outside of the heritage of Yisrael, yeah, he called the Gentiles, he called them dogs and pigs. That's what he called them. Well, Yahshua never called the woman a dog. He called, if she was not of Yisrael, yeah, she was a damn dog. I want to bring some clarity to that because these beasts today, they're so stupid and so ignorant. They think they're wise and smart, but they're not smart wise. Let, let me turn here, quick, turn here quickly in the book of Tehillim. I want to begin in the writing of the Torah, in the book of Psalms, quickly. If I don't finish this, I'm going to finish this next week. I don't want to finish this straight talk. I think I'll get through it today. I'm going to rush you a little bit. Daiweed here, the prophecies, speaks of this revelation of Yahshua. Look what it says here. Psalms 22. To Helium Psalms 22 and verse 16. I want you to hear this. Psalms 22 verse 16. This is Yahshua. He says, for the chelet or the dogs have compassed me. Just like that we. Did the dogs compass Yahshua HaMashiach? Did he call them dogs? He said, for the dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked they have enclosed upon me. When you, when, when you allow the assembly of the wicked to enclose, did not the assembly of the wicked close upon Yahshua? Yes. They encircle him like a pack of damn wild dogs. Yes. And these unlearned, wise, unwise beasts that think they're wise, they have not searched the Torah. This man says, you think you, you, you know more than anyone well, you think you search. I know I search more than him. I may not search more than you. 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 You, you, you. But I know I search more than that man. I know I'm wiser than that man. How about that? I want to bring out the dog thing, all right? It says, for dogs have compassed me. This is the very first person of Yahshua. The prophecy of him hanging on the stake. The assembly of the wicked that rush shot criminals against Yah, they have encircled me. Did they pierce his hand? They pierce my hand and my feet. Is that Yahshua? Did he call them dogs? He said, these damn Gentile dogs, these nations of dogs, they've been captive by me. They've tried to encircle the word. They've, they've done that. The Catholics, uh, the Muslims, and all, and the Jewish, and all of these damn dogs, uh, they've encircled the word of Yah. And they pierce it with their lies and their corruption. They try to kill your sure to promote a damn Jesus and a Lord, to, and to promote a God. Come on, Yisra, Yah, I'm not backing down. Hallelujah. I'm mad today. Yeah, I am halal today. All right. You don't have to. I am because I hate this oppression. I hate what this nation does to people. I hate what Britain. I hate what these nations do to the people. They are of the spirit of Hashatan. The, the people, those that are in power, they have bowed down to worship him. He said to Yahshua, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of this because it's delivered unto me. Yeah? He's established his mind. He has elected a people, a nationality. He has hidden his order in the minds of a people. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. There's no one more cruel than Britain and France and Portugal and Spain. These are no one on that continent of what we call Africa. They, they, they had their wars, the scrimmages, they shot the arrows, killed a few. Nothing like the scene with these vile nations uh, that have been raised up by hell. Uh, his seed is in them because there's a seed of darkness and there's a seed of light, my bad. And he has raised them up. And I don't back down for nobody. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not backing down. These dogs, they have pierced the hand of Yeshua. They have... Uh, they have allowed, they have, they have encamped about him to know him like a damn dog. Well, what's the issue? Why has that happened? Because uh, of these lazy, shiftless, weak men that call themselves watchmen. The little dog, Adam, this little dog, you know, she, I don't play around with her. She knows me. Believe me, she's, she, she, she already got a fear of me. When she, see, when she comes around me, if I want to play with you, when I say go, she goes. Believe me, she does. And she runs home when, when she comes in contact with me. Oh, I sprinkle a little water on her. She goes, and she's, I say to her, get home. Go. And she go. I, believe me. So what a man that is a seer, he's got to stand high and see everything. He said, there's the Brittany hole over there. You daughters don't go that way. 
He said, that effeminate fag Elton John called himself married. He said, don't, don't listen to their damn lies. This freak over here been here to promote this, this love hell uh, that has entrapped so many. We must, we must assault this army of hell. We must stand against that. See, that's what a watchman done. But what has happened? I will show you what has happened. He quickly turned. Uh, quickly in the book of, uh, of uh, hallelujah, of Yeshua Isaiah. Hallelujah. And y'all reprove these wicked men. These are supposed, we're supposed to be the teachers and the, and the instructors of Israel, y'all. We're not, uh, he says in Yeshua, Isaiah 56, verse 10, 56, verse 10, uh, he said, My Safa, those that look out and spy that keep watch, uh, he calls them watchmen. Uh, we are supposed to observe, we're supposed to watch out, uh, we're supposed to spy and to keep our eyes in tune with what is taking place. Uh, he said, His watchmen, uh, they are blind, every, uh, every, they are blind, they have no spiritual insight. Uh, he said, They're all ignorant. So you, my little freak, you think you got knowledge? He said, they're all. Did he say whole? Yeah. The whole, they're all ignorant. They are stupefied. They're, he said, they're all ignorant. They're all ignorant. He said, they're all dumb dogs. Did y'all call them dogs? Yeah. Did y'all call them dogs? Did y'all call them dogs? Yeah. Well, y'all sure then say that these are stupid people. Straight talk. He said, they are all dogs. He said, they are all. Does he say call there? He said that they are all ill-lame, ill they are muted, they are silent, they are all dumb dogs, they are unable to speak. They are dumb dogs, he said they cannot bark, they love to sleep, they love lying down, loving to slumber. Anytime a man loves to slumber, he's going to be brought to poverty. Anytime a man loves to lay in bed all day, anytime a woman loves to lay in bed all day, I don't give a damn who you are. You're going to be brought, brought to poverty. I watch my natural order, my natural family. I will watch my natural sister lay in bed at 12 during the day. Come on, woman. Something is sick in your mind and your babies need. You can even nourish your spiritual being. You can even nourish your natural being when you do that. Y'all gave a man seven hours, uh, orderly hours to get up uh, by the time the sun rises. Uh, he works a certain, he should not only work with eight hours a day. He got eight hours of time to spend with his family. Y'all, he must sleep eight hours a day. Man sleep 10, 12 damn hours a day. Something is wrong with that man. A woman left in the bed all day long and sleep. Something is wrong. A little falling a hat, a little slum, a little sleep. Then poverty come. They're not rich in the things of y'all. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care. I like to get up. I can't, I can't lay in bed. Laying in bed for me late as eight, boy, that's, uh, that's tough to do that. And that's got to be on a special day. It's got to. The only day I get up a little late is Shabbat. I get up at 7.30 around. Before 7.30 every Shabbat. I get up. I'm up. I'm looking. I'm studying. Make sure I open the door for my Zachim. Bring the paper. Make sure that's done. Close the shop. Make sure that door's open. Yes, man. Always. That's the latest I would get up 7.30. They that sleep, they sleep in the night time. Come on. We're in the night season. And so this is a generation loving to slumber. They love to sleep. This this generation. Uh, look what he says. Uh, because these are to be watched when they love to sleep. They cannot bark. They cannot utter. They cannot cry. They cannot cry out. They cannot bark, sleep, and lie down. And they love to slumber. They love to sleep. Uh, he said, yes, they are greedy damn dogs. They love to eat. They're greedy dogs. They love to talk. They're boastful. Come on. He's talking to the watchman. He said, they're greedy damn dogs, uh, which cannot never have enough. Uh, they, are, they are shepherds uh, that cannot understand. They have no power to be to discern. They have no insight. Uh, they're not attentive to the things of God. They look to their own way. Everyone to his own gain from his quarter. And he goes on to say, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, he says, I'm going to give unto Yisrael. Uh, he says, I'll give unto them reach, uh, shepherds after my own heart. Uh, and they will feed them with knowledge, da'at, uh, and they will feed them with understanding. You understand? Uh? They will feed them with being all, with being. That's what they shall feed them. Uh, and a true messenger of Yah will feed us with, with the understanding of Yah's mind uh, through Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahshua is revealed in us, Yisrael. Yeah. And that's a fact. That's what they do. That's what they do. We can't have you. Come on, man. We, we, can't eat, we can't eat cookies every day. I was down there in Memphis, Tennessee. I said, I sinned egregiously. And I couldn't hide it from him because he's like a beast, like a boar. Yeah, that one you birthed, man. 
So we're sitting at the table and this woman here, this is supposed to be my issue. She bakes a carrot cake. I hadn't seen a carrot cake in so long. I didn't even know what it looked like. And this man that I said, you made me do it. He said, no, you want to say the devil made you do it. I said, no, no, sir. I didn't say that. I said, you did that. That's what everybody said. I said, no, I'm not saying the devil made me do it. I'm saying, you, ach, Thomas, yeah, you made me do it. So he said that he cut that cake and you could see the moist and it was just insane. And my mouth began to. I said, uh, and he bit into it. He said, oh, mm, oh my, have some. I said, no, you're not going to make me do that. And I'm looking at that moistness and the, it was just insane. I know a lot to you. And so he said, oh, my, 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 my. He, he's talking like that. I say, man, don't do that to me. Please don't do that. And before I knew it, I cut me. I got sick as a dog when I ate it. I'll be honest with you. I hadn't eaten anything like that in a long, long time. I got cut me a little piece. And once I opened up that corridor, I wanted to eat some more, but I could not. I was too sick. He said, see there? But that's all right. I'm back on my road now. You, you won't get me again like that because I won't sit. If I see, if I see that, and y'all be my witness, I had to confess to him. I said, man in the ark, I said, you know what? I, <laughs> I couldn't wait to see that cake again because every time I saw it, I had to have me a piece. And it was just beyond, beyond delicious. It was insane. He said, preach, I eat that by myself. I eat it for breakfast. And so when I left, it was a piece about like that. That's all I was left. He and I, he's a kind man. Very hospitable. Very sweet man. An honest man. You don't find men that are honest, that say things and they fill in all the gray areas. He would tell me things. Okay. And he fills in all the gray areas. Man you can trust. There are not many men you can trust today. That's just the truth. Can I move on a little farther here? Hallelujah. 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 He said, they're all greedy dogs which cannot have enough. They are, all, they are shepherds that cannot understand. He's going to give us shepherds after his heart. They're always looking for, for their own gain and for their own desire. That we pray to pray. This is what we should pray here. Look at this quickly. T. Helium 22.20. Hallelujah. To Helium 22 20. It says this. That we said, deliver my nephesh, my being, my life, my substance. He said, from the heret, from the sword, yeah. He says, and my darling, from the power of the dog, from those that are unclean. Anyone that is not a part of the nation of Israel, yeah, it is a dog, it is a pig, it is a swine. And the Torah warns us of those. And any time a man cannot warn you of a dog, he is not even a human being. If anyone don't warn, even those that don't know you, I guess a bastard like Benny Hinn, a damn fat hog like T.D. Jakes, he is a coward, not even a jackass. You warn the people of Yah, you must warn them against them. Hallelujah. And we're such hypocrites. We say we don't judge. I judge every man. I judge me. I judge. That's the only way I can help you. Israel is by judging. Yeah. Your shoe gives us instruction quickly. But Titi Matthew 7 and verse 4. M Matthew. Matiti 7 4. He says, So how will you say to your ark, let me pull the spit out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your eye, in your eye. He calls him a hanef. He said, you damn hypocrite. He said, if you first cast out the beam out of your own eye, then you shall see clearly how to get the motor out of your brother's eye. If you do that. And then he said, then when you do that now, he says, give not that which is kadosh to the dogs. How in hell will I know a dog unless my eyes have been opened? How do I know not to give what to a dog unless my eyes have been opened? Unless I judge me severely. I must, these are fools out here. He said, get yourself right. Clean up your house. Get the lies out of you. 
Get right. According to the Torah. Hold that right there. I want to read this quickly. I, I, I put this here. Just hold that. I, I want to finish reading that. But it says in Shirak. Shirak. The book of Shirak. 32. 15. Shirak. 32. 15. He who seeks the Torah will be filled with it. But a hypocrite will be offended and stumble at it. So that's why Yahshua said you hypocrites. See, the Torah corrects us. Shirak says, he that seeks the Torah shall be filled with the Torah. Yeah. But a chanef, a hypocrite, that's why Yahshua said, you hypocrites. You first get yourself right. How do you get yourself right? According to the Torah. You get that which is wicked out of you. You can see clearly how to get that out of your ark. That's just a small infraction. Now, see, these individuals think they're so spiritual. If they get themselves right, they'll see how to help the ark. Oh, this man said, I make the sheep weak here. I, these young men here take him down. Listen to this. Now, he said, your sure never calls anyone a dog. He says, give not that which is Kodash to the dogs. How do I know who a dog is? Your sure you gave me a command like that and you don't tell me who the dogs are? You tell me he gives me a command like that, don't give that which is Kodash unto the dogs. He gives me a command and I don't know who the dogs are. He gives me a command, he doesn't identify the dogs, or the Torah identify dogs. These fags are dogs. These, these temple prostitutes of Judaism are dogs. Yes. These temple dogs of Catholicism and their Jesusism and their Maria, their Maryism, they're dogs. He said, give that which is kadosh unto the dogs. Uh, neither cast your pearls before a damn pig. Uh, least they trample them under your feet uh, and turn against you and tear you. So when a man turns against me, he shows me he's a damn dog. Uh, that's what a dog does. Uh, they trample under their feet everything they've hurt. Uh, and they turn against you and try to, to, to kill you. Yeah. I wouldn't let a weak man kill me. Mm -mm. No, you can't kill me, weak man. you got to have more than a little... Uh, Effeminate bullet to kill me. You got to have the sword of the mouth. I love this kind of preaching. I used to love to, when I was a young man, I wanted to hear preaching like this. I used to hate it when Evangelist Hartsfield preaches them, those little sermonettes. I never like that. This is the only kind of preaching I've always liked. I've never liked anything. Yet. Because why? Because I know if this corrects me, I don't have to worry about the blessings. Because it makes my heart give to you. It makes me do right. I get riches and blessings. I don't have to worry about blessings. I'm contented, I'm happy, I don't have to worry about that. He fulfilled. That we said, I've been young and I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or see, begging bread, I ain't begging no man. I've never implied or said that it cost us $2,000 a month. I said the first month that we went on to this visual stream, the people, we had about 50, 60, 65 people, that first service. And of course, they ate up $500 worth of visual and Yah moved upon my Simeon, obedient, faithful, ebbed unto Yah. And he found a way. I said, if we continue like this, it will cost us $2,000 a month. We can't afford it. I will not spend that. And Yah found a way. You have not heard me mention that again, have you? That's how stupid people, they can remember what they want to hear. Well, he said that. Joking, Yah didn't know how to pronounce that word. You'd be surprised. People will write about stuff like that. They're stupid. But they got a warrior here. I love to fight. Come on. I love to fight. I love to fight. And, and I'm strong too. Sure I am. Here, and I'm strong. I said to Akio safe, we were unloading the trailer yesterday. We were gardening, and I went over there and I looked. I said, okay. I'm not going to put this on Akio. Come on, Yosef. And of course, each one of those logs, they had to wear at least... I say 175 to 200 pounds. That's awkward trying to pick up something that big. And they had to load them in. It was all neat. And so I said, you're safe. Come on, we're going to take this off the truck. So we pulled them down to whereby someone had to get up there. You understand? And then we had to get them out of the road because they need to get out of there. And it was sweet gum. That's sweet gum? Poplar? Oh, okay, I thought it was sweet gum. Okay, forgive me, I'm glad. About anything was sweet gum. And I said, right, it was sweet gum. It's just, it was wet. Water was just, I mean, it was so slick. The bark off you, man, you have to be careful. 
So Yo and I, we got that thing unloaded, and the last piece, he said, let me get it off for you. He dropped on his knees, and he got it off. He leaned that thing. Listen, I see, listen, that's Yo now. He gets it off. I said, Yo. I said, that's, that wasn't a big piece there, but that's all right. You got it off. I appreciate what he did. So when I would roll them down, I would try to roll them so they'll just keep rolling. So we had to push them far. But they were tough to roll. The piece was heavy. Some of the piece, 300 pounds, 350 pounds, easily. I said, those young men, they put it up there. They, those, the, they put it up there. That was tough. And so Yo said, I got away. We need to get on our knees. He drops on his knees. Huh? He says, see that? This is so, so easy. He get on his knees. He was rolling, bad boy. Standing up on that. That was tough. You understand? That was tough. And that was tough. But I'm glad it was popped. I can. I don't mind the sweet gum. Y'all, you know I'm not complaining. I love poplar and oak. Sweet gum, I'm not complaining. Not one bit. Get the sweet gum trees. I just know what sweet gum does when we're over there trying to split during the winter, shit, me. Huh? She's a monster. She's a stubborn heifer. She's nasty. Sweet gum is nasty. She's a nasty cow. She doesn't bend. She doesn't bend. She's a stubborn thing. She's all twisted and snarled, and she show her twisted ways. You heifer, she's tough. She shuts the machine down. She hit it. And so what you have to do with that cow, you got to take her piece by piece. You heifer, you heifer. But I'm a man too, all right? I got you. So you whittle her down a piece at a time. Bam! She's stubborn to you. She's the one that will kick out at you. Huh? Knock her a piece up. She want to break your, sh your, 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 your shank there. I want to get back to this. I want to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the preacher move on a little bit. All right. Hallelujah. 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 He said. First of all, give not that which is kadosh unto the dogs, neither cast the pearls, the gems of Yah. But T.T.I. 7 says, before these pigs. You try to cast the name of your shoe before these pigs, they trample it. They get mad at you. He said, at least they trample them under their feet. And they turn against you and they want to kill you. I know the Lord God. I know you do know the devil, your father. He's a damn dog, man. You ain't going to tell me the Lord Jesus ain't done this for me. He did. That's why you despise truth and you hate wisdom. I'm not backing down, Yisraya. There's no to His name is Ikad with the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Now here he identifies dogs, doesn't he? I must know who dogs are. Look what Shaul says to me here in uh, Philippians. Felicia. Philippians, Philippians 3 2. Philippians 3 2. As he cautioned the Israelites against those that were teaching false, seductive doctrines. Now he cautioned them. Should I not caution the people against the damn Benihin or TD, the fat snake pig or fag bishop long down there? We should do that. Look at what Shaul says here in Felicia, Philippians. Uh, 3, 2. He says, I want you to beware of dogs. Yes. He's not talking about that little old thing that uh, Ach Abner has. He said, you must be aware of those prostitutes, uh, religious prostitutes, uh, that prostitutes your nephesh. Why and why would he tell me to beware of dogs if there were no dogs? He called them dogs. He said, beware of dogs. Uh, he said, not only that, he said, I want you to shema, to guard, to keep your mind open, to observe and to give heed. When you see a dog, you say, that's a damn dog there. He said, beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. And beware of those of concision that cause schisms. And those that, well, I want to talk about cam trails. Man, get out of my face with cam trails. Or give a damn about chemical trails. You think you're wise and that's what you were talking about, cam trails? Let's talk about the way. Don't come to me with no folly like that. Got these people all around, they're so fearful of cam trails. They're so fearful of the new world order. 
You got these jackasses teaching on that. Damn the new world order. And I didn't say dumb. I said damn them. And they think they're wise because they can talk about the new world order. Only thing they've done is read what someone else has written. They don't know what this truth. I know this is true because Yeshua is revealed in the midst of Yisrael. They know more about the Masons in a culture than the Masons. Lies! They go out there with great secrecy. They let out what they want to let out. And those that have come out, they, they don't know. There's an echelon that you don't even know. And those that come out, even they are fearful to even expose that. That's a fact. It's almost like coming out the mafia. You don't, you don't, huh? You're in prison. You don't snitch, man. Because they will walk you down. Even in the course of the Masons, because I went to the seventh degree. It's like they will split your bowels open and cut your throat and cast it out into the sea, into the sea, air on the seventh time. Boy, it was crazy. Sure I was. I was ignorant. I didn't know. I thought it was for honorable men. And where I went, I was the youngest man in that lodge. And the man I thought it was honorable, he said, I want you to be a Mason. I don't want your brothers. I want you. Come to find out, the old man said to me, he looks like, a, what's that thing, the Yoda? He come to me one day. When you get to the 33rd, you find out who the real God is. He said it like that, the real God. <laughs> he didn't say God, but you know how, you know, those sophisticated, what the real God is. I was young and ignorant, 22 years old, 23. I said, uh, my friend, I know who God is. So we get to the 33rd, boy, you know who God, he was about 80 years, he was an old, little, hard, not looking thing. Get to the 33rd, you find out who the real God is. And I, I said, I know who God is. He said, boy, when you get to the 33rd, he kind of irritated me on that. You find out who God is. He mobile. He walked off like that's how he kind of walked. And I said after that this, I don't, you know, I was ignorant, but I didn't want to find out who that God was. He was the same God that I was walking with, you understand? His high, it's wonderful how Yah keeps us. Even Yisrael to all the wildernesses, he keeps us. He keeps us to the appointed time. He kept us. Even in all of our ignorance, he kept us. All right. So when our heart he heard the truth, we did not harden our hearts as in the days of provoking him. We didn't do that. So what a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful Abba he is. He tells us to beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of that kind of concision. We must know who the dogs are. We must understand because in the kingdom, Yokohana and on that Isle of Patmos, as he began to see the truth of Yah, Gilyana Revelation 22.15, the kingdom, the Melchut, he says, Revelation 22.15, for the kingdom are without dogs. The kingdom of Yah, does it say that? It's without dogs. It's without witchcraft and sorcerers and root doctors and every kind. It's without those that are whoremongers. You tell me, you don't tell a daughter what a whoremonger is. What is a whoremonger? Britney Spear and uh, Nicki Minaj uh, and, uh, and Hammer and all of them and T.D. Jakes uh, and Benny Hinn uh, and Mr. Brock and all those lying bastards. I'm going to stop here in a minute, but I'm going to continue on this. I'll get back to Gil Gunnar, all right? Don't, this, this I'm going to clarify. This is straight talk. This week and next week, all right? Hallelujah. He said, for without our dogs, sorcerers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, whosoever love to live a lie. When you find those that love lies, they love Jesus, they are dogs. They love, we must beware of these damn dogs, that Jesus is a damn lie. Jesus is a damn lie. It is a damn fictitious lie. They are dogs. I don't give a damn what color their skin is. I don't care how they talk about Hebrewism. I don't care what they talk about identity. They love a damn lie. They love to make a lie. And they make a lie. They defend a lie. They're damn dogs. They're dogs. So we must understand the son of a dog. We must know the son of a bastard. I want to read this and I want to close with two other verses. I want to show you what a bastard is. I know folks get upset with me when I use the word mamzir. But they're bastards. They're without the living testimony of the power of Yah and Yahshua. But he should not say that. No, I'm going to say it because the book says it. I have one to say. He writes me and say, well, you should not even make mention of the name of God's in the house. And I, I went back and found some study I did in 2010 or 2009. And I found all the gods everywhere where the name God was hidden. Baal worship. And there are hundreds. I want to teach that one day. 
These are stupid jackasses. They have no, what the word mentioned is the same as to remember. It is Zakha. You should not, what that means, what y'all saying, this is what he was saying. Will you believe me if I tell you? Don't make a memorial unto a thing that you bow down, you honor that. That's what he's saying. But these damn fools, they think they're wise, but they're stupid. Oh, I won't mention the name JC. These are stupid men. They're so stupid. I just look at them like, man, you are stupid. And our language is littered with God types. It's littered with God types. It's littered. It's littered with God types. All kinds of gods. And this book has all kinds of names of gods. That's why he calls wise men. A wise man, he called those that are wise. And those that, that know him. He brings them up through the, just like the order he did Shaul. And then he broke him down. And even all those that were in the presence of Yahshua, he was not a wit behind them all. And he said, this is the one I should use to take this to all the Gentiles. That doesn't mean that it is one that is of Gentile origin. It means the nations of the Gentile world. Yisraya was scattered. He had the ability. He had the, he had the skills. He had the knowledge. That's what people think. You understand? Because Yisraya looked just like a Gentile. You don't know them. That's why Yahshua, he came to seek and to find. He came unto his own and they didn't even receive him. He came right into Yerushalayim and they rejected him. Those that said they were the house of Yisraya. And that's why he commanded. And they went everywhere. They went everywhere. They went everywhere. When he left, they went everywhere and declared this Bezorah. And it must be declared everywhere. I wish I, I, I if, now I don't use the, I don't like the word wish, but if God grants unto us finances, I will utilize that for this truth to be heard by others. I will take advantage of every little kind of, we're not going to, we're not trying to do something where millions of dollars, but come on, what, what, is, what is money? It's not worth a damn thing anyway. But if God grants us the opportunity, I guarantee you I'll do it. I will print a scripture, we will print a scripture that will be inexpensive that we can send all over the world, Yisraya. I would take the funds and buy the print press and all of that. I would spend, yeah, I would spend fifty thousand dollars for it if we had it. Set it up and print a nice little thin script. And nice. We can send Africa. We can send the Russia. We send it all over. I want to show you the real nature of a bastard. You know what it is. I've read it many times. These I can preach on it. I want to show you this right here. I want to show you the son of a bastard in Hebrew, Hebrews, Hebrews. Hebrews. Two verses here and I'm going to close from here. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 7. This is the sign of a bastard. Hebrews 12 7. Is this Yahshua here? This is Yahshua. Is this the word? Yes. Does Shaul say this? Sure there's him a bottomless one. Look what it says. If you endure chastisement or correction, Muzan, Yah deals with you as with sons. For what is a son, for what son is he whom the father chasten not? If he's a son and the father doesn't correct him, he's not a son. He said, but if you be without correction, without the muzah of Yah, where, where of all are partakers, not just Israel, but all are partakers, uh, then you are bastards uh, and not sons. You've been born of a certain slip, of a certain mentality, and a certain spirit. And the one that gives us revelation of that is Shalom, Shalomo in the book of Wisdom. He says this in the book of Wisdom. Wisdom, 4, if you read chapter, chapter 4, began in verse 1. But I want to read this one verse in my closing here. He said, but the multiplying brood of the wicked, of the Rasha, of the criminals, against the Torah, he said, they shall not thrive. They shall not grow. They shall not maturate. They shall not be rich. He said, nor take deep rooting from bastard slips. They are the bastard slips. Nor lay in a fast foundation. Those that are the bastard slips, they lay no foundation. They, they are not friends to anyone. They don't know how to love. They are stupid. They have no ruach of Yah. They have no knowledge of Yah. I'm going to stop there. I may go back next week. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. I got up this morning and spent a little time. And then I'm going to stop there. Okay. Hallelujah. The greetings of God rest upon you all. No, I don't have to have some kind of official procedures of how to stop. I stop. They are the bastard slip. They have no 
desire. He calls them wicked. They're rasha, they're criminals, they're condemned. When Yah says the wicked shall be turned into hell, and every nation that forgets Yah, he's already judged them. Well, Yah sure came not to judge the earth. Read the rest of that, what he says. Why did he not come to judge the earth or condemn? Because the damn wicked world was already condemned. They love to quote the first part, but they don't want to deal with the other part. It's a condemned world. Come out of this world, Yisrael. Come out of her. Touch not the unclean things of the world. Separate yourself from her. Don't think like her. Don't allow her to train your mind, your children, all right? May the riches of Yah rest upon you all that have joined us. Yah Barach, Yahshua's mighty name, may he strengthen you. We appreciate all your assistance, your help. Do send an offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah Barach, Yisrael. We're getting ready for Shouts. We'll see what the weather will be. We want to have the service outside because I've been laboring. I've got the, my, the coal pond finished. Hope to get that finished tomorrow, get some in there, and have a beautiful time on next Shabbat evening. We're not going to have service this Wednesday, all right? We'll have service on the Shabbat, Shabbat evening, and then next Wednesday, all right? But not this Wednesday. We're not going to have service. We're not going to have service on this Wednesday because we got so much to do. I have garden to work on. Last night, I was simply tired. I was too tired to go. I wanted to put Zakhen Yarami up. I know he was tired. They've been working late. But he knows he has the liberty of these at any time. Just believe me. Let me know. You, you won't have no problem with me. No one's ever because I, I went to bed. It was 9. I was gone. 9.15. I was, I was flat out. Gone. Tired. I was gone. I mean, no, no listening to nothing. Boo! <clears throat> And that's it. Didn't wake up either. I mean, I didn't wake up. I was just like, the way I, when, when I laid down, it was just like, bam! One of that, man. It just, just like, boom. Nothing new, boy. That one, I, I, I can move nowhere the other way. I was gone. And it sure was nice. I enjoyed that rest. Felt so much better. I woke up around 6 this morning and said, nah. Uh-uh. 50, 60 degrees in the house. It was chill. I said, nah. I'm not getting up. Of course, I couldn't go back to sleep after the sixth day, you know. But that's all right. Yeah, Barak, you all, we appreciate you that have joined us. All of you, may the riches of your rest upon you. Be encouraged. Don't be discouraged because of what things are transpiring. And let Yah establish in you a firm heart, heart of truth. You know, you can't get offended at what I say when the world speaks all kinds of lies and say all kinds of things because I say, damn, a bastard, a dog. I'm not going to stop saying that. Hell, it's in the book. I said to my Zachen, uh, Tayon, yeah, I said, isn't it amazing that <clears throat> people answer the telephone, hello. And if I say hell, they get all twisted. I don't even like answering the telephone. Though. I don't even answer the telephone. Yeah. Yes. That's the only way I answer. Never answer. I don't like that. hell. Oh, hello. But if I said hello, he cussing. But yet you cuss all the time. He, when they call you, hell is open. That's all you saying. Hell. Oh, my. That's why you say hello. Hell oh my. Hell oh my my my. Girl, how you doing? Man, I'm just calling checking and see what you're doing, dog. Just playing the PFA. What's up, dog, dog, dog? I've never liked talking on the telephone. Don't talk to this day. I don't. Period. I'm not a telephone connoisseur. I don't like talking. I don't text. I don't do any of that. I don't like writing no long emails. I'm not the best of typists, but I can type. I can roll on one. You understand? I can roll. I can roll on a keyboard, you understand? I don't have to hint peck like that. I can, I, can, I can make it work. I can make it sing, you understand? But I don't like doing all that. I don't like that. You know, it's, it's sad that people think you come in from a hard day's work, you work hard, and they think, you know, it's just so easy to just, be, you got five or six letters there, just so easy to just sit there and just, you know, and they want you, and they got all this, they may write, come on, because they got time, they're not doing anything. They may write a five, four, three or four page letter. I want you to answer everything. I said to them, just listen. Just listen. If you go on the, uh, our website, I said, we, if you listen to messages, it'll answer all those questions. Don't, don't worry about that. And they think they weren't precise. I want to know this. I've had them write me lists of questions, answer 10, 10 15 questions. I'm not going to answer that. I said, go to the website and listen. All your questions will be answered. But that's what they think. And these are the people who want to send a nickel. They want to send a dime. Send an offering today. Yeah, you that are listening. We have a nice crowd. Send something. We're not going to go home if you don't send anything. God's blessing our fields is abundantly. 
we're taking care of a man that we get, get them squares from. We're going to make sure we take care of him. Oh, my. I want him to rejoice. Send him some everything. Beats. Everything. Everything. Send it. Make sure the cabbage heads are clean. I got to get me a faucet up so I can wash it down so it'll look. When they go there, they don't have all the dirt on just all pretty and clean. When you go to the farmer's market, when you look like that, that's what you want to buy then. So I wanted to see it and say, oh, my, 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 my. So, you know, I don't want to have to wash it or nothing. Cook it. Again, we greet you all and told Ayab for your, for your visit. May he enrich you all in your shoes. Then. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want you all to have some songs ready for, I know you got them ready. We're going to have a great time here next Shabbat evening. I'm, you know, I hope that Yah, his will. I don't pray for rain or no rain that he grants us to have service. I've been getting everything ready. I got candles with centronella to keep the bugs and stuff away. We have service outside. It's going to be a wonderful time and go into the night season and then have fellowship and do what they did on Shaul. Break bread and eat and just enjoy each other. In all things we do, Barak you are about. For your kindness, your message of truth unto Yisraya, we pray that you, Barak Yisraya, you touch us all in Yeshua's name to heal your people. Those that have joined us, our friends, our enemies, the spies, we do not, uh, we're not offended at that. Yeah, may the word be a healing, a strength, a fire, the cutting edge to cut that in the depths of their bosom. We ask in your shoes name. We pray for our Ach Davis there in California and those that have gathered with him, our precious Ach Yaakov there in Texas and all of our friends and listeners. Yeah, we're not omitting anyone but bless them we pray and our precious our precious elder there in junction city kansas our precious ak zakane mcdonald precious old man grant him to come ya that we may dine in fellowship with each other our precious friend and our precious supporter ak zakane tayonia and all of yisraya our hold there kidia there in arizona Bless her, Yah, her faithfulness, her son. Bless them, her kindness. Just touch them all and all those that sin and give. And our hope there in Canada, Yah, the tremendous offering that she sent on this week. Our precious Oho Diana and her husband David there in West Virginia, tremendous offering. Hallelujah. We'll hold that for them so they can come for tabernacle. Bless them, we ask in your sure's name and strengthen them in a mighty way. We brought you for all things in your sure's name. Bless those here today. Guide us and go with us this Shabbat. We ask it all in your sure's name and from the depths of our bosom, we cry hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.